I'd like to look at the modal synthesis voice by 1979 module. It's the Mutable Instruments Elements module in 4U, UCLA format, lots of banana jack inputs. For those of you that know elements, this will all be familiar territory. For those of you that do not know elements or about modal synthesis, I recommend you check out my friend and colleague Ben Wilson's great explanation of the Mutable Instruments Elements on his DivKid video page. I'll leave a link in the description. Modal synthesis is way different than analog synthesis. In analog synthesis, we always start with an oscillator that is just pumping out usually a simple wave or a complex wave. And then we either filter it or wavefold it or do something to it. And the trick is to create a complex attack that has character, since the oscillator is just pumping out a single sound. In modal synthesis, or physical modeling, it's just the opposite. We basically start with the attack and expand its harmonic and timbral content over time. Let me give you an example. The attack is the sonic fingerprint of a sound. Here are two sounds, the same pitch, two different instruments, but I've removed the attack, so see if you can identify them. The first is the Japanese flute, the shakuhachi. The second is a finger-plucked single piano string. Here they are with their attack. In modal synthesis, we begin with the attack and add resonators, reverbs, uh, various timbral shifts to it, and pitch shifting. So with all that in mind, let me just give you the broad strokes of the modular synthesis voice. And again, refer you to uh, DivKid's video on mutable instruments elements for an in-depth look at all the knobs and dials. The left side is where the attacks are generated and triggered by sending a gator pulse into the orange gate banana jack. Three different categories of attacks are available, strike, bow, and blow. Each have their own volume or mix knob. Below that is the timbre knob, which has various functions. In the case of strike, it selects different types of attacks. And in the case of bow and blow, it does act more timbrally. Mallet selects different types of struck or percussive sounds. Flow affects filtering of either the bow or blow. The contour knob affects bow and blow, and it's different types of envelopes all the way to the left is more of a short attack envelope. As it goes towards the middle, it sort of crossfades out into a, a more slow attack, slow decay, slow release, and then almost a reverse thing on the right hand side. On the right side is the resonator. In geometry, it does various things as far as pitch shifting and modulating. Brightness, of course, is another filter like thing. Damping is the duration or length, the release, if you will. Position is position in the sound itself. It's been thought of as, in physical modeling, are you plucking the string up near the bridge or over the fingerboard or down near the nut where the tuning pegs are? Changes the timbre. Space is a reverb. In the middle section, the white button you can use instead of sending a control voltage to the gate. It's just a manual trigger. True stereo outputs, one and two. Uh, exciter in, audio in, uh, allows you to take, say, an audio click from a square wave and trigger the sounds instead of using the gate. The resonator in, you can take an audio sound, put it in there, and then use the resonator to change the sound of an external sound. Enough talking. I'd like to show you around a bit.
That was all gated from a single section of a 281e quad function generator. In the next video, I'll look at the external exciter in and resonator in using audio signal. Okay, thanks for watching.